Welcome to the Top Business Leaders Podcast. You'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more and to download our show notes, go to topbusinessleaders.com. Our guest today is my publisher, Tom Corson Knowles. Welcome. Thanks, Dan. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad you're going to share a lot of great information that will help people write their books. But first, why don't you tell us about your story? How did you get started in the book writing business and now the book publishing business? Sure. So I wrote my first book when I was in college, actually, at business school. And I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And I, I love personal development. And, uh, you know, my first personal development book I read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I got involved in a network marketing business. And uh, one of my mentors said, hey, you got to read this book. And I read that book and I was hooked. I just wanted to read every personal development book I could get my hands on because it just made a big difference in my perspective and what I realized was possible for my life. Because before I read that book, you know, my goals were very small. I didn't really have big goals or big dreams because I didn't think I could achieve them. And when I read that book, it really changed my whole perspective. And so I read hundreds and hundreds of books and by now over a thousand books. And at that time, I, um, I wanted to kind of synthesize what I had learned and the principles that I had found really useful for myself. And so I wrote a book and I tried to get a traditional book deal. And as you know, uh, that process is very long and very convoluted. And, uh, and so six years later, I had no book deal. I had no publisher, I had no literary agent and no book deal. And I was basically like I was banging my head against the wall. You know, no one would respond to my emails or phone calls or submissions. And so, um, so I didn't know what to do. You know, traditional publishing just didn't work for me. And so I was talking to a friend and he just casually mentioned, hey, you know, why don't you just self-publish your book on Amazon? And I thought, well, that sounds like a cool idea. So I, I did my research, did my homework. Uh, a few months later, I published my first book on Amazon and I saw I had 11 sales in the first month. And for me, that was this huge like light bulb moment because I hadn't told anyone I'd published my book because I was so embarrassed. You know, I was so embarrassed to self-publish it. So I didn't tell anyone. But I had sold 11 copies without telling anyone. So I just thought, you know, imagine what I could do and I actually started telling people what I was doing and started actually marketing my books. And so in that first year, I had my first $12,000 a month from ebook royalties alone on Amazon. And I just kind of grew it from there. And so uh, I was so excited about the success that I had just self-publishing my own books that I started teaching other people online. I've got a course now on Udemy and courses on my website. And I taught over 80,000 people online how to write and publish and market their books. And basically my students, uh, said, Hey, some of my students said, I love what you're teaching. I love what you're, what you're doing, but I don't want to do all this technical work, the you know, cover design and editing and branding and distribution and marketing and promotion. Can you actually publish my book for me and help me with that stuff? And so that's how I started TCA publishing and I started publishing books about five or six years ago. Fantastic. Can you tell us some of the success stories your clients have had in using their books to build their business? I mean, obviously, I'm one of your case studies because uh, I published or you published uh, my book, Write Your Book in a Flash, and I've gotten numerous ghostwriting clients and book coaching clients as a result of that book. It really helped my credibility. But can you tell us a, a, few, a few of your clients uh, and the success they've had because they published books? Yeah, so we've got an author named Kevin Horsley, and he's from South Africa, and he is basically a memory expert. And, um, you know, he has a very fascinating story. He uh, had, you know, issues in school, developmental issues, learning issues, and sort of did really poorly in school. Um, and he's basically told that, you know, he would never, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't going to be a mountain much, right? And so he started studying the mind, how it works, and started actually studying memory, and started practicing memory techniques. And now he is what's called like a grandmaster of memory. I mean, he's done like what's called the Everest of memory challenges, and he memorized probably over 10,000 digits. And, you know, you have to repeat like five, five digits anywhere randomly in that, in that period, like really, really quickly. And he beat the world record by like 30 minutes or something crazy. <laughs> um, so he's just an incredible guy, and he really learned to master his mind and his memory. Um, but he, you know, and he was doing speaking and consulting a little bit. Um, but before the book came out, you know, he was really struggling to get, you know, enough gigs and to get busy with his speaking and consulting business. And so since the book has come out, it's been translated into over a dozen languages. It's sold over 200,000 copies. 
and he's now basically booked up uh, speaking and, and I guess travel all the world and do what he loves to do, speaking and training and consulting uh, with people about memory and how to improve their memory and productivity and focus. And so uh, that's just a great story because, um, you know, Kevin, Kevin is not a guy who wants to, you know, be marketing all day. You know, he doesn't want to do blog posts every day or interviews every day. He does some, but he really, his really focus, his passion is just speaking and consulting. And so because of the book, he's able to focus, you know, his career doing what he loves to do and, uh, and also make, you know, quite a good living doing it. So it's really a great story and it's, uh, you know, very proud of what we've been able to do with Kevin. Fantastic. And I have to tell you a behind the scenes story. When I was checking you out to publish my book, Should I Go With You Guys? I saw Kevin's book listed as uh, one of your case studies. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. But, you know, anyone could be a number one bestseller for a day. Here it is uh, six months after the book was published. Let me see how the book is doing now. And I looked for the book and I found that it was number one on a number of different categories. And then I realized something else. It wasn't published six months ago. It was published a year and six months ago. So this book has tremendous staying power. And I'm sure your marketing and his marketing had a lot to do with that because it was literally number one in a number of uh, book categories, which is really hard to do to sustain over the long term. So my hat is off to you for that uh, great success story. Now, I'm sure that as a publisher of books, you publish some books and you reject a lot of book ideas as well. And I'm sure a lot of people listening would, would be wondering what goes into a good book proposal or what goes through the mind of a publisher to say, yeah, this book is going to make it and this book isn't going to make it. What are your insights? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, there's a lot to it, I guess. I'll just, I, I want to talk about share from the perspective of when we're reviewing submissions, right? Because we get hundreds of submissions every month and we reject about 99% of them. And so the first thing, the biggest mistake about over 50% of the submissions we get, they make is too many typos, too many errors, too much, just, just not good enough on the writing, right? So they haven't invested the time, the energy, the effort to really revise their writing and hone it um, or to maybe hire an editor to help them do that. So that's the number one thing is definitely make sure that it's good to go, right? Um, you want to make your manuscript or your book proposal as clean and well-written and professional as you possibly can before you submit it because you're only really going to get one chance with most publishers, right? So that's number one. But number two um, is you have to have a book that has a lot of demand, right? There, ha and there has to be a market, an audience uh, who is hungry for your book and your message and what you have to share. And so I think that involves, you know, doing your market research and we've got lots of blog posts um, for free on our, on our website that walk you through how to do market research for a book. But it's really, really important that you make sure you understand who your audience is, what problem your book is going to solve for a nonfiction author, and make sure that you are clearly communicating the problem that you're solving and the way that you're going to solve it in your book and in your proposal, right? So that's really the, the, the two main things you have to do is make sure you have a clean professional book with an audience. And then the rest of the, of the stuff that's important are, is really about you, who you are and what you've done so far in your career, in your life, and where you, what your plan is for the future, right? So what is your marketing platform? You know, do you have tons of social media followers? Do you have a big blog? Do you have a podcast? Like, do you have something that you've created where you have an audience built in, who has consumed your material, your information, your ideas, your, your podcast, whatever it is, and knows who you are and likes you and likes to learn from you. Because if you've got that built in audience, that means we can guaranteed sell X number of books, right? So if you've got, you know, 100,000 visitors on your blog every month, well, we know we can convert a certain amount of those visitors into book buyers. Right. So, um, so when a publisher is looking at a book, they're looking at, you know, basically, can we make a profit of this? Right. And so part of that, um, part of that formula is, okay, is there demand? Is there, is there demand for this book in the first place? Is it a good book that people really want to buy? That's part of that. The other part is, you know, is the author going to be going to be able to actually sell copies of this book and push copies of this book to their audience. And so that's where I think a lot of folks fall short and the way to, um, to kind of remedy that problem is to focus on doing something that you really love and to focus on education marketing, right? So find a way to get your message out to people in addition to the book, whether that's YouTube videos or blogging or podcasts or interviews or PR, 
whatever it is for you, find a way to get your message out to your audience and do it at scale. And preferably try to find a way to actually build your email list as well, because email, email subscribers, um, you know, open rates on email are just so much higher than, than the, the click through rates on social media, for example, right? So having, you know, 10,000 email subscribers is a lot more valuable than having 10,000 Facebook followers, right? So generally speaking. So, um, so that's what I think people should focus on is building their audience building the platform in addition to even having special manuscript and having a book with a lot of demand. Fantastic. That's great advice. Let's turn back to the writing of the book itself. I'm sure you get a lot of proposals that you say this is a good idea and they send you the, the manuscript and they think it's done. What percentage of manuscripts do you receive that you say are publishable right now as opposed to things that have to go back and be re-edited or developed in some way? So almost every single book we get, we do development edits, copy edits, and proofread. So there's a lot of editing that goes into it, um, regardless of how good the book was in the first place. Obviously some need a lot more and some need a lot less. Um, but I think, you know, my philosophy is that, is that you should do the best job you possibly can where you're at right now. Right. So if you're editing your manuscript or editing your book proposal, ready to, ready to submit it, um, you should be able to go through a final edit of that material and not be able to find any significant mistakes or changes, right? It should get to the point where you're like, I can't make this any better, right? And once you're to that point, that's when you should move on to the next step, right? Because um, the problem with taking shortcuts or trying to just, you know, get it done quickly and not go through that process of really intense editing is that you, what, the next stage is an editor is going to work on it. Right. And so the editor can't do their best work if you haven't done your best work in the beginning. Right. Because they're going to spend most of their time fixing all the little mistakes that, you know, you could have fixed yourself instead of working on the deeper issues that could have helped you make the book even, even better. Right. So, um, of course, you know, development editors are still going to try to help you make your manuscript better and change your organization, your structure and so forth. Um, but in my experience, the better job you do at step one, the better every step of the process is going to be after that point. Fantastic advice. What are the two or three biggest mistakes that you see come in uh, on those manuscripts that need to be edited? I mean, beyond typos and grammar and things like that. What are the, some of the bigger issues that you see? So from a developmental perspective, which means from kind of the, the big picture perspective, the book, the organization and structure and so forth, I think um, there's often, the biggest thing that's, that's noticeable is the first chapter. So I think for a lot of people, they do a poor job in the first chapter of really setting up, you know, the problem that they're solving, how they're going to solve that problem, why they are the expert to write this book to solve that problem, and how the reader's life will change as a result of reading the book and applying the material or learning about this material. So I think that's, that's a really crucial chapter to have, that first chapter, because it has to connect with the reader, right? So if someone's in a bookstore and they open up your book and start reading, or if they start to look inside your book on Amazon or another uh, online retailer, they're going to start to read a couple pages. And if they're not captivated from the first one or two pages about what this book is about and who it's for and your writing, they're not going to read the rest of the book. So it's really, really crucial that you have a great first chapter that hooks readers, that communicates what your book is all about, how you can help them change their life. Uh, and if you can't do that, uh, then you need a really, really good editor to work with to, to find a way to make that happen. So that's, that's a big one. The other big mistake I see is just lack of organization. So it could be that the chapters aren't in the right order or they're missing key information. That's, that's a big one. So for a lot of nonfiction authors, um, sometimes, you know, a, a third party or editor looks at it and then there's like, well, you're just missing an entire chapter on you know, XYZ subtopic, right? Um, because maybe they just overlooked it or maybe they thought about it and then just didn't, didn't, didn't want to spend the time to write that chapter, whatever the, the case may be. But it's really important that you, you completely, you have a complete book, right? So you should cover everything you need to cover in that book to deliver on your promise and on your solution for readers. So it's really important you don't leave really key information out. Um, uh, another thing with organization is sometimes uh, it just doesn't flow very well, right? Sometimes the chapters are just out of order. Sometimes they're not covering things in a really clear, logical, step-by-step -step manner. So that's really important thing to look at. And then the other thing I think is really important for a lot of nonfiction books 
And it's not necessary for every book, for, for, for a lot of books, you really want to have some kind of extra material at the end of each chapter or at the end of the book to help readers go that extra step of the way through that process and through the journey you're taking them on. So for example, you might have action steps at the end of every chapter or questions for reflection at the end of each chapter, or maybe you have, maybe it's a book on weight loss or fitness or training, something like that. Maybe you have like a meal plan at the end of the book or, um, or a workout or fitness plan, right? So you, so you want to think about, you know, what additional information resources, tools can I offer to readers beyond the book itself? That's going to help them get where they want to go because nowadays it's not enough to just have a good book. I think it, what people really care about in their life when, you, when, when people are reading self-help books or books, uh, nonfiction books in general, where they want to get a result is you have to help them get that result. And the problem with most people when they read a book is that you know, they read the book and then they put it back on the bookshelf and they're done. Right. But you really want people to take action to take the next step. And so not only does adding extra information add so much more value to readers, actually helping them take action and change their life, but also helps them connect with you more by going to your website to download the materials or signing up for your newsletter, signing up for your program and staying in touch with you on a deeper basis so that you can continue to build those relationships and sell more books or more products and services to them in the future. So it's really a really win-win scenario when you take that extra time and take the extra step to find ways to add more value to readers beyond what's in the book. Great advice. Thank you. Let's go back to your days as a writer. You've learned a lot. I mean, you've written several books. What did you learn? What did you learn or w wish you knew at the beginning that you learned after you wrote book three or book four? That's a great question. Um, I mean, definitely there's so many little things, right? There's so many little things you learn as you're going about anything, right? Whether, whether it's writing or starting a business or you know, playing a sport, right? There's a lot of little details that you you only learn by doing it, you know? Um, and so, so, so much of what I learned is unconscious. I can't, I can't share that stuff. It was little things here and there, right? But some of the big stuff that I think uh, other folks writing your first book, maybe your second book might really benefit from is to, to focus on what you are most passionate about right now. So for a lot of authors, you know, you're very creative. You've probably got 10 or 20 or 30 different book ideas. And a lot of times when we write the first book, we try to fit everything we know into one book and it becomes too long or too convoluted or too uh, broad or too vague or too watered down because we really haven't focused on the one main problem that we're solving for readers. So it's really important that you focus on what is the one thing you want to achieve with this book the one difference you want to make in your readers' lives, and then focus all in on that, right? Um, because the more focused you are with your book, the better it's going to be. And you can always write another book, right? But if you have one book that's too long or doesn't really appeal to readers because you haven't focused enough, you're not going to get the results that you want. Fantastic. Tom, as we wrap up, what other advice would you have for business people who want to use a book to promote their business? So I would say focus on adding value, right? Focus on making a difference in someone's life. I think a lot of times in business, it's easy to, uh, you know, to hear about the newest strategy or the newest method or a new idea for marketing. And we're so focused on myself and the business and getting money that we often can lose sight of what really matters, which is making a difference. Because if you make a difference in someone's life, they're going to want to do business with you, right? But if you are just going about this process because you heard it was a good idea, you might not get the results that you really wanted. So focusing on what is the biggest problem for your target customer, your target reader, and solving that big problem that you really care about and that's really going to make a difference in their life, and just doing the best job you possibly can. Again, going in detail with the action steps, the questions for reflection, the downloads, the worksheets, you know, free courses and additional free videos, whatever it is that you can do to just go that extra step to add value to your readers. The more you do that, the more of an impact you're gonna make in those people's lives and the more they're gonna talk about your book and share your book. And word of mouth is the number one reason people buy books. So again, the better job you do at the stuff while you're writing the book, while you're creating the book, the better results you're going to get once it's published. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Tom.
For more information about Tom Corson Knowles and TCK Publishing, go to tckpublishing.com. Thanks for listening to Top Business Leaders, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.